Yabba dabba doo doo. Hey, Princey boy. Hey, Felix. Hey, guys. Really great to see you. Let's kick it. Oh, baby. Yeah, you play that flute. You play that flute like someone's life depends on it. Cat's looking at me like he wants to come up and cuddle. Well, come on. We're open for business, buddy boy. I'm open for you. Come up here. You got to come up here and take it. That's my lesson about life. I'm teaching my cat how to be a go getter, how to get your cat to be a better businessman or woman. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come on up. You can do it. Think about it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He doesn't respond to that kind of encouragement. Come on, buddy boy! What a happy boy. There you go, buddy. Just give me enough headphone slack. Sit in my lap. Look just like the old days. When I first oh, I would be working on a computer when I first met this cat, I had a big ass computer chair. He sat right next to me. Right in his chair. He didn't have to be on my lap, so he could be stable. Stella threw away that chair because it looked bad. I know it looked bad, but the love was good. The love was there. And looks over love. Is that what we've become? Looks over love. No, not on my watch, baby. Well, actually, it did happen on my watch, but I put up a fight, and I lost. In relationships, long-term relationships, you pick your battles. It's like, Stella picked your battle with me to get me out of the basement, streaming for a long time until, until she knew she could win the battle, and she went for it. She put all her chips in, and I'm actually thankful for it. It's really nice to be out of the basement. Making a Yu-Gi-Oh deck. Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh! Around Musketeers. Cool, man. Beaming. I'm pretty good. I went and saw my friends today. Yeah, he was, as he was being picked up, he's like, what's happening? Is this worth it? I don't know about this. I don't think I like it. Okay, wait. No. He's, okay, it's fine. It's good. Great. Now I'm happy. I'll sit on his lap until I make too many movements. 
Our do our little dog is like that too. She'll give you a cuddle, but if you if she feels like you're gonna disrupt her sleep, she goes, "Look, you guys are obviously not serious about this, about actually relaxing and sleeping." And uh, I'm going over there. I'd rather sleep on the floor. Ugh, I need to install my keyboard tray. Or bring a computer desk up here. That would have been nice too. Uh, what's this? What's this? Come on. That's weird. There you go. That's better. Alright, I want to find more of these bamboo strikes. I just love them. I'm usually a big fan of little mini games in games. The Bioshock one, big favorite. Um, because it required timing and, and there was a lot of pressure while you were doing it. And I think people making decisions in a limited amount of time in a pressure time situation is almost always pretty fun, pretty rewarding. I really like it. It's the whole... That's what makes it interesting. Like, If people had to play Scrabble with a time limit, it would be a lot better. I love the idea of Scrabble. But most of the time, Scrabble is sort of sitting around waiting for somebody to come up with a word, and, and the whole person, the person is going, If only I had an E. I need an E, guys! Can I trade someone for an E? And then there'll be a person there who goes, Uh, you can't. That's a, that is, no, you cannot. That's against the rules. What do you think this is? This is a real serious game of Scrabble. But Monopoly got a lot more fun than people made up their own rules. So embrace it, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was looking at... I was just peering through the PSN store. And I think it was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I thought, man, how long ago did that come out? You think that would have dipped in price by now? Maybe with the lockdown, they're not dropping things down. Red flag. I'm going to assume those are mongrels. Are they investigating the horse or do they know I'm here? But is he going to come up after me? Or is he going after the horse? I think he was going after the horse. Why did he just blow his horn? He doesn't know I'm here. So yeah, Assassin's Creed, there were a few others, I can't remember the names, I'd like to have a quick look through, but I was really shocked, there were a lot of AAA games, multi-platform, that were just staying at $80, and I think that, I think they realized, you don't need to drop them, and there's probably a lack of new games coming out a little bit, I mean, game production had to have slowed down a little bit, unless people are all working from home or something. Oh, this is awesome. I kept... How do you safely get down off of a... rock in this game? You have to jump. It's a bit silly. There's no, like, walk down. Oh, you know... Oh, I see. If you have the camera the other way, he'll, he'll go down? Or maybe not. Only if it's to a handhold. Okay, good thing they didn't see that. What are these guys doing? Kind of dumb. Here you just a bit. Oh, I was a millisecond away from it. I would have had the reflexes. I could have had an awesome assassination. October 2018. It was full price. Full price. Yeah. Monopoly is really boring, actually. It's fun the first hour or two, and then it sucks. That's why Settlers Catan is so much better. You can play a game in 45 minutes to an hour if people know what they're doing. It has all the trading fun of Monopoly, and fun strategy and multiple ways to win. Whereas Monopoly, you can only win one way, and someone just ends up being a jerk that bleeds the game out forever. It's not fun. And then, like, when you lose, it's just a horrible feeling. Oh, <gasps> steal. So the wagons have steel. Are you my horse? Horse is gonna come by and say, Who the F is this? Not even gonna look that horse in the eye. You ain't worth it. Yeah, so I think that these game companies are realizing 
Yeah, there was no sale. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, $80 in Canada. Full price, baby cakes. No sale. You, you pay big money. And it kind you know, makes sense. I think that Steam... Steam had a big influence of, of like, knock every price down, have ridiculous sales. And Sony and them will still have that. Like, right now, Spider-Man is $50. You have to get the Game of the Year edition. Which actually makes sense. Like, yeah, you want to put out all that DLC after. And you want to package it up again. Come on. What are, what's your plan? What is your plan here? You're kind of looking down. You're looking around. You're not comfortable, I guess. So, he's kind of, like, got half of his feet up. He's looking out. He doesn't know where he wants to sit. So, yeah. I think that Steam influenced everybody to have these crazy sales. Where I, I got to the point where I was, um, chain assassinated. You know, I would just like stop buying full price games because I'm like, well, I know that these are going to be, these are going to come down in price. Not just a sale, but they're really, they're really going to be much cheaper. You know, you'll be paying 40, 50 bucks or something. Seems like the Sony first party games are still going that way. God of War being a PlayStation hit is now 20. Spider-Man's 50. And then now it's on sale on my PSN. Spider-Man's down to um, uh, $25, 50% off sale. But there were a lot of the multi-platform games are just staying up high and I think they're going... You know what they might be doing? Ubisoft might be doing something like... We'll keep it full price on PSN, but if you come to Uplay or something, we'll give you a deal. I don't know if they can even do that because of the the agreements they've had with like EB Games, GameStop, the game stores. That's why digital games cannot be cheaper than the physical games when they launch. But you can have sales. So it's more like that's maybe a way of getting around... Uh, the pricing agreements is just to have these sales constantly. Most third party, even released four years ago, is full price for your PSN. And the sale is so often it goes down significantly. Yeah, okay, maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm just used to seeing this stuff on sale so often. Chain. I like when the guy's obviously seen you, but I'm going to chain assassinate you. You know, in Deus Ex Human Revolution, a game I talk about a lot, you sneak up and do the takedown, it actually has a different animation for doing the double takedown. And it looks really cool. It doesn't look like a guy watching you assassinate somebody, and then as he's attacking you, his, his hit's not connecting, and then you attack him. There's sort of like a lack of... Yeah, I don't think you'd see that in a Nintendo game. And it's a little unfair, because Nintendo doesn't put out as many games. They don't have to worry about, like, 4K visuals. They can put a lot of resources into one game for a long time. But you just, you kind of never, you never see like glitches or silly things. Everything feels like it was thought of, you know? I think you need to, I think, I mean, it's, it's never been cheaper to play games. Games have not gone up in price at all with inflation. Yeah, I mean, when Nintendo has a sale, it's like a 10% sale, 15%. It just kind of goes down to the price it should have been, if not a little higher. And you're, and because they get the games last, you're always like... Oh, shit. You're always paying the most for the worst version, but you're paying for it to be portable. So it's kind of the newest version, but I mean, you know, something like Skyrim. I, I bought it on uh, Switch when I found... Uh, it for like 50 bucks. I was not gonna pay $90 to play Skyrim. Uh, you know, like probably the worst looking version of it. But you're paying a portable. Uh, I guess you could get an Nvidia Shield or something. How about that uh, GeForce Now? You pay a monthly subscription, you don't need a computer anymore. If you got a, if you have good internet. These guys keep shooting me. I guess they see you.
Oh. oh, I almost had the assassination on him. Oh, jeez, I'm getting overwhelmed here. I made a lot of mistakes there. Yeah, so Nintendo's tough. I think the main, my main complaint with Nintendo is that something like Mario Kart or Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, which is not a sequel on the Switch. It's not a remaster. It's the same game as many years ago. We're going to put me out on this side. So in case I didn't want to, if, in case you couldn't get through these guys. Oh, obviously it's much smarter to attack them from the other side. This is awesome. This feels good. That's a good feeling. Wow! Shurduk. That sounds Hungarian. Urduk. Yeah, I, th I think it's pretty gouging when they charge you. Oh crap, the horse. They're gonna see the horse. Oh, they're gonna chain. This is gonna kill me last time. I'm not pressing circle, but I'm not pressing the direction. Wait for me. Whack him! Break him! You kinda gotta be aggressive. There you go. Water stance, big hits. Bam! It's a, you know, it's a very simple but deep combat system. Feels really good. Really forgiving. Always feels fair. They give you plenty of opportunity to dodge things, block things. But it's just that constant rock, paper, scissors of unblockable, parryable, blockable. It's just awesome. It's simple. Very simple to understand, but it allows you to do so much within it. Oh, yo, yo. <laughs> oh! Who's that from? That can't have been from him, was it? Wow. I guess it was. Find and observe the leader. Even Nintendo's physical releases from the GameCube haven't gone down in price. It's oh, and they're they're actually only going up. Like you want to buy a cartridge version of some N64 game, they're some some of them are worth like over a hundred dollars. They have become sort of valuable antiques. Dosho, 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 dosho. Breath of the Wild has only gone on sale twice. Summer, summer of 2018, November 2019. Well, they realize they don't have, well, they don't have as many games, so they and they've invested more money in making them, possibly. It works. I mean, who is what's this guy fighting? Bees? Observe the leader. Was he training? Am I learning something from this? Leader observed. Kill or observe them to unlock the stance. It's kind of neat. Are they as popular as Sony's first party? Well. I mean, you don't have a choice. If, you, if you're playing 
If you want to play Breath of the Wild, there's one place you can do it, so you're going to pay that price. Now, Nintendo didn't... They could maybe sell more if they went to other consoles, but there's sort of this understanding that you have to have these sales all the time. I mean, I've, I've, I've read a lot of stuff saying, like, leader killed. I've read a lot of things saying that most game sales, like 90%, you know, 90% of the um, sales are done within the first three weeks or something. First month. Whoever's going to buy that game, the majority is going to buy it right away. And then after that, you can lower the price and stuff because you're kind of going after a different market. There's people like you or me, and a lot of people that are motivated. They're like, they don't have to have the game right away. They prefer to wait to buy that safe. And I'm like you where, all right, if I know the price is going to stay high, if I know that Skyrim and Breath of the Wild are never going to go down in price, it'd be better to just buy it used and then... Yeah, just buy it used, and then, um, sell it used. And it's almost like you're just renting the game at that point. Six steel, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why they do that. And they kind of do the opposite. But the thing is, anybody who buys a Switch is going to buy Mario and Breath of the Wild, probably. And Mario Kart. All the all your staple games of, like... If I was to advise somebody... Okay, you're buying a Switch. You get Zelda, you get Mario Odyssey. If you like Donkey Kong games, yeah, they have that. Do you like Mario Kart? Sure. And they're all full price. So, kind of no matter when you buy it... They're always going to get... If every if you bought the console new, that's like a $400 console or something, or like $300, and then another like $500 of games, they're always going to get $1,000 out of people who buy the Nintendo stuff whenever they buy it. But then you got to think, if the prices went down, if the Switch would drop by... A big chunk of money, a hundred. There's a lot, like I've I've almost always been somebody who buys consoles after the first price drop, because I don't see the value of the launch games. They're not. Usually, it's like there may be a slightly better looking of something that's already that's still available or already available on the previous gen, and they just don't have the games yet. They don't have it figured out, and it's like four to five hundred dollars. I usually buy my consoles for like three hundred. I would like to see that data, Felix. So would more would they sell more if they put Breath of the Wild and the Nintendo Switch at a cheaper price? Would more people be like like all the people who have a PC? They got a PC already. They got a <clears throat> an Xbox or PlayStation, and they're like, man, I'd like. To okay, I, okay. Here's a good example. My friend Inka the Dragon. He would like... I would really like him to play Breath of the Wild. I think he'd enjoy it. But for him who has a PlayStation, an Xbox, uh, and like a Mac that he plays PC games on because he has GeForce Now, you pay $10 a month or something and you can play your PC games on there and you don't need to have a top-of-the-line computer. It looks top-of-the-line. You're streaming another computer. So... For him, it's, it, he can't justify spending another full-priced Switch, full-priced Breath of the Wild. To play a few games on there and they're all... It's just too much. But, if the Switch had dropped down, how many people who were, you know, like they grew up with Nintendo, they like Nintendo, or they're curious about Nintendo, they might, they might jump in. They might, you know, be curious. They're like, these games are never coming to PC. Oh, crap. What was that? What did I just drop there? A wind chime? I want to 
black powder bomb. Where'd those guys go? You bought your PS4 at launch. It was catching dust for the first year. Yeah, that's been something that, you know, that seems like that affected you in the way it, it would affect me, Felix, because, um... I know that you usually are always talking about, like, when should I get the PS5? Will there be backwards compatibility? When can I sell this PS4? He could get a Switch Lite when they go on sale. Yep, it's true. But here's the thing. Other than... Other than Mario Odyssey... You can play most of the best Switch games on either a Wii U or you can play Breath of the Wild on a Wii U and it runs great. You can play Mario Kart. You can play a great version of Splatoon. You can play Donkey Kong Tropical Breeze. Freeze. You can play a million stuff. <laughs> Ah. I save you. Worship me. Bayonetta 3. Okay. See, that Bayonetta is totally off my radar. Oh, I like these little bandits. They're gonna just run through and murder. You know what I like about this game is it's like, oh, do you like countering? Okay, you can just upgrade yourself so you can counter everything. Do you like dodging? Here's a better dodge. You know? You just want to assassinate people? You can upgrade that. Because Sekiro... Sekiro, if you were not good at parrying, you're not going to beat the game. It's a, it's a parrying game. The Gaming Bat 88. I'm not a kid now, no. But I was a kid in the 90s. Do you see? I am the 90s. At a time as a kid. Also, I didn't choose the name. <laughs> My boss did. This is his website, a 90s kid. You don't look like a bat. Are you hanging upside down right now eating fruit? I could see the other bat. Don't eat while you're sleeping, George. You're gonna choke. The Wii U looks old enough to me. The Wii U was a really bad design. It was big. It was clunky. The screen sucked. The Switch was everything the Wii U should have been. Actually portable. High quality screen. The Wii U was pretty terrible. But I, you know, it's funny. I did find the Wii U tablet actually pretty comfortable. I played through Breath of the Wild the entire way through on a Wii U, and it was really comfortable to hold for long stretches of time. I don't think I ever had a Wii U Pro controller. I like the tablet a lot. Played it in bed sometimes, just looking at the screen, the little screen. Sometimes I just bring my Wii U different places and just like plug it into a wall and play a Wii U. Even traveling. It was kind of portable. Yeah, exactly. So in Sekiro, you have to parry. Uh, what's his name? Born different. Born beautiful. Born let them. I'm not like you, baby. Who's that? Sterling. Jim Sterling. Jim Sterling, he, he made a video where he mentioned Sekiro is good. I'm not good at it. I can't parry. He says that about 50,000 times. But, you know, you get the point. But in this game, yeah, if, you, if you're not good at parrying, or you are good at parrying, they let you kind of really customize the way you want to play. So, like, you can make things that were previously un unparryable, parryable. It's pretty cool. Or you can have a better role. Or whatever you want to do. It's pretty nice. Although I would assume that later on in the game, there's going to be stuff with bosses in this game where... You probably have to parry. There's probably no way around that. 
Fat Man Jim. Drunk Nat. You love the Wii U and the tablets. One of your favorite controllers among all the consoles. The Wii U, me buying it used, coming with a bunch of games. I loved it. Buying it at launch and kind of waiting for games to come out, probably not as good, but... I mean, when I bought it, I bought it off this rich kid who just had every console and every accessory and just wasn't playing with his friends anymore and wanted to, like, travel or something. So he sold it to me for a crazy low price. And I got... Oh, I got so many friggin' rad games. Ones I didn't really like playing with Bayonetta and stuff. I am interested in VR. I kind of forget about it a lot. But, uh, I would like to play it. I tried my strategy of how I got my PS4. I put an ad in, like, sell me this. Actually, you know what? I went, I started messaging some people, and I wouldn't say I lowballed them. But I was sending out some hard offers, like, I'll come pick this up today if you sell it for, you know, 250 or something. I just think... It's not going to have a lot of resale value, the, the VR. It's pretty specific. You still got to buy all the games, and you probably have to buy them mostly digital. Yeah, I guess you could buy them physical too, but... That's really going away. You have to buy the stupid, um... I bought the, the... It's the second that they... Here it is. This is what I want. The second that they announced... You need to have a PS camera. <laughs> I immediately went and found a PS camera used before those would become expensive. I should have got the move controllers too. That's... Oh, I love this game. I want one more. Yes. You get interested every once in a while, then you look at the library. That's it. Yeah, there's... There's not... Okay, here, you know what's a really big one that's not on there is you can't do the Google Earth app, which... Um, I had heard recommended from Giant Bomb that that was their favorite VR game ever was Google Earth. You're actually going on a tour of the world. You feel like you're flying. You feel like you're gigantic or very small. And you can't do that on PSVR the last time I checked. That's, that's a huge selling point for me. There's no, like, um, I don't think you can play Valve's The Lab. I don't think you can play... The Half-Life game. Yeah, Flight Simulator. Anything where you're sitting in a chair. Like Microsoft Flight Simulator with that real, super photorealistic um the, like the, the sort of graphic mapping of the world. Any simulator, yeah. Driving games, that kind of stuff. Well, you know, that's why I titled my stream that is, um, did it go through? Did it change the name of it? Shit, I just closed the chat window. Is it look- I, I have a feeling Microsoft is just getting out of consoles. I don't think they care anymore. They had made some statements saying like, Oh, we're not going to compete with Sony and Nintendo. We want to compete with Amazon and Netflix. And I think that when you look at the Xbox... One. Oh yeah, that's the thing, you need a PS4 Pro, you need to have- It's very expensive to get into PSVR, and it's also like, it's kind of like the Nintendo Switch, it's expensive, but it's the worst one. You know? Although I think the, um, the headset and stuff, everything's quite comfortable. What we're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Microsoft said they're... Because if you notice, like... That show that they had was more about Games Pass. They weren't trying to blow you away with... With their games. And their console. They keep saying they have the most powerful console, but... I think Microsoft kind of has mixed messaging. Even at their own... Even kind of in their own department of... 
games, it seems like one aspect of the company is going, let's make it super powerful. And then the other teams are going like, nah, just get Games Pass. Let's, uh, like, it's going into the streaming future. Netflix doesn't make a DVD player, and they don't rent DVDs anymore like they used to. Well, actually, they probably do. But, um... <clears throat> There, there isn't a fucking lock on. Hey, look at this. I'm gonna have this guy over here. Now what? Who's locking on? Hmm? No one. I'm not locking on shit. Maybe I have that guy after he hit me. I think Microsoft tried to. They tried to turn the Xbox. One into a entertainment unit with TV, streaming media, all that stuff, and it was a big mistake. Sony tried to turn the PS3 into like a physical media center with millions of USB ports and like, uh, what do you call it? Like SD card readers and stuff, and made it too expensive, and that's a problem. I don't think they actually make a lot of money off selling consoles until maybe like the the slim generation when you can make stuff way cheaper. When you're mass producing stuff that's kind of cutting edge, although it's never going to be as powerful as the PC. Although, it's not as powerful, but to make it small, it's probably still expensive to fit it into a little box. Although that kind of seems like Sony saying, does it need to be small anymore? Why have they given up on that? That might be a big problem in Japan. That's probably why it's designed to stand up. Because I don't, I don't think people in Japan are going to like a big, flat, wide, horizontal box like an Xbox One. We sold their original PS3 to Lost and made their money from first-party games. They had a lot of first-party games. Remember, they were putting one out like every month. A lot of Warhawks, Infamous, stuff like that. I don't think the... You know, Prince, I don't think that... The, we're going to have a PS5 Pro too soon after. Although, although, maybe we will actually. Because the PS4 Pro, I think it sold pretty well. <clears throat> you know, you, you don't see them on clearance. I like the classic PS1. Follow the golden bird. He'll show you the way. Where are you taking me, bird? I love how this game... just shows you things in the bloody world. How cool is that? Yeah, I don't think it'll be too soon. But there's there's enough launch games that I'm, I'm down. I think. That... There are a lot of games on the on the Sony sort of hype reel that looked awesome. If two or three of those are out at launch, I'm in. Maybe four. Man, I bought a Switch to play. Why well, did I buy a Switch? Let's play Mario, I guess. I'd already played Breath of the Wild. I think I was, I don't know, streaming more and stuff. Made sense to get a Switch. I got one for a good deal. It's tall, but not as wide. The Xbox is not as tall, but wider if both are standing vertically. Yeah, I think you can get away with, um... Who's, who's fighting here? What's going on? Fallen Outpost. Right. Anyways, I think, I think Microsoft is betting big on Games Pass. 
which is going to be way different. And it'll be about getting exclusives. Even timed exclusives, I think. But you know, the thing is, like, Sony from day one, the PlayStation beat the N64 because they had good relationships with third parties. Microsoft is trying to do that, but they're trying to just buy them. You know? Sony seems to have, like, they're forming these relationships. They're, they're becoming easy to work with. They're supporting them. And Microsoft's just like, you're good, I'll buy you, now make games. But, like, the thing with... Fuck, 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 The thing with trying to buy them is a... It takes a long time to make a game, so kind of... By the time you buy them and then you go, Okay, now make some games really quick! Well, it's gonna take, like, a bare minimum two to three years. Are you the leader? What kind of dress is like? Oh, you want? You have learned the wind stance. You'd buy it for the potential upgrade patches? Man! What Xbox was doing with their Xbox One X making something like the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy look better? The best place to play the Final Fantasy 13 trilogy is on an Xbox One X. How cool is that? And. You could you could go to some used store and pay ten dollars for for a three sixty game and have it look amazing, which is kind of which is kind of like playing it on PC, right? Go on Steam, you don't pay a lot for it, but you got ray tracing and mods and stuff. But it's too that's more work. I like it when it works. Hmm. You buy a PS5 a launch of Demon Souls as a launch game. For me, Spears and Axes. That's cool. I get it. Triangle, triangle, triangle. Typhoon kick. For me, it's going to be a couple of those like space games where you're on another planet and stuff. I don't know what it's called, but the one where you're, you play as the old lady. I want to play that. And there's another one where, I don't know, you have like some kid and there's the moon and... And it kind of looks like, uh... The, the Division. And Deathloop. Shooting at the wrong guy, buddy. Wind Stance is your favorite? Okay. This is wind? No, this is wind. I'm gonna stab you! Hey. Who's doing that? You're only hyped for Horizon? Well, it's not another... Sp Is it a sequel? Is it a DLC? Is it just like a... I thought it was just a, like a slight upgrade. <laughs> who, sh who the fuck is shooting at me? There he is. Sequ it's really a sequel. Okay. Spider-Man's 25 bucks. You think it's worth playing? You think I'd like it? I'm kind of picky with those big open world games. Uncharted Lost Legacy, but a, but a bit bigger. Okay. Well, I'm sold on that. I think I would actually prefer a smaller Spider-Man game, because the thing... The thing that turns me off of Spider-Man is I've heard that the... There's a lot of, like, BS collecting and, like, slower kind of stealth missions, because they wanted the game to be bigger. Every game has got to be big, epic, 40 hours, 40 hour game, story, content, content. 
Keep your kid entertained. Content! And then if you're an adult, I have a life. I'll play Uncharted 1, please. This game's awesome. Horizon 2 full-fledged. Targeting 2021. I'm excited to see what they can do. Sony exclusive. They've been... The team has been working <laughs> with Sony for a long time. Spider-Man's awesome. Spider-Man's powers have always been the funnest way. You know, it's only 25 boners. I was going to get PS Now to play that in control. But I could pay $50 and get them both forever. And never play them again. It's kind of the annoying thing about the digital libraries. I ra really rarely play games twice. Because everything I play is on stream, so. Not really for me. I don't even really watch movies twice. TV shows, nothing. Even ones I truly love. More like a watch it if it's on and enjoy it. But when you have the choice, I'd usually prefer something new. Music's different though. Maybe there'd be someone in there pooping. If this is an early 2000s PC game, there'd be someone in there pooping. There'd be a lot of poop jokes. Give me your iron! Hmm. I think you, me, Daryl, seem to have pretty similar tasting games. So if you can, if you dig on Spider-Man, I probably could probably like it. It looked, I mean, it looked really impressive to me in the trailer. I thought, okay, so uncharted set pieces, fun traversal, maybe funny writing, and, uh... Yeah, I mean, is the city fun to explore, though? God, I wish I had a looking glass. How do you get down slowly? Hold circle? You have to jump. Who's that? Yes. Whoa. Sha pa 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 pa. Which one's which? Wind. Sorry, I need to learn my new stance. There we go. Yeah. I'm in that box. Collect. There we go. Can you skip past the boring stuff in that game? <laughs> Gravity Rush 3, New Ape Escape, God of War 2. Sony Pony! Alright, um, maybe I should put another point. I should put a point into these stances. Typhoon kick. That's pretty cool. Get out of my face. Crease stagger. That's actually what I would really like. Still out there trying to negotiate with a cat. Always goes well. Inflict increasing damage of each attack in your flurry. 
prone stance, heavy attacks with ferocious speeds. What's that mean? As in, what's a prone stance heavy? Stone stance. Oh, I see. So pressing triangle, you attack way faster. That'd be pretty nice. It's only one point, too. You doing okay out there, Stella? Still can't get a cat out from underneath a car, I think. Sometimes life's pretty hard. Exploration. Hot spring Shinto. Items. Fox dens. Hmm. Gain moderate resolve by using a parry? That actually... I mean, considering how many times I do parries... You're actually a Kingdom Hearts fanatic. Of course, among other games, yes. I don't know what you are anymore. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're about. Do you like Kingdom Hearts? An actual interesting ape escape game would be nice. I like the premise. Big colorful platformer. What they need though is there needs to be way better movement and traversal. Like Daryl says, it needs to be fun to get around. I don't want to play platformer unless it's fun to get around. Like Ori and Hollow Knight. You getting part two day one? Oh god, I'll probably I'll probably be yeah. I'll probably get it too. Even though I'm cuz I'm just kind of curious of what they do next. What could they? Oh, there's a thing you can grab onto down there. Nice. That was handy. Good spot for it. Hello Stella. Hmm. Yeah. I don't think I need to relitigate how much I think Nomura is a hack and how much of a mistake I think it was to give him to give him an intellectual property that he does not understand. He, he has no idea why Final Fantasy VII 1 was effective and why it emotionally resonated with people. And it's really clear when you see what he did with the two games after it that he had control over. And the movie and the remake. Komodanohamadenakunatosamuraisamatachiwasrenaitaminiwa Fragrance beyond the veil after the forty-five or seven days. Shoto Ima Adachke Nitsuite Shirusareta Makimono Yonde Ita Tokoro Desu. Shodaiwa Tsushima no Shiso to Yobarete Taso Desunga Sono Iwarewa Gozonji Deska? Shima Junior Kagari Vidaito Ariake no Kogane Dera O Tateta Karadana Ojiwe no Shiro no Mamori O Tsuyok Suru Saiwa Adachi Dono Teo Kaste Kudasat Tarashi Tatemono no Yuami O Mitskeru Sai Moari Yarikawa no Handan no Ori Mo Jinryuk Sareta Sayona Kotoga Oshiete Kudasari On Nikimas Kansha no Shiru Shitoshite Kochira O Osame Kudasai Otasha De Kingdom Hearts MMO? Hmm, that's interesting. Then we could get all the people who like Kingdom Hearts together in one place and then remove them from history. I don't I don't know if Nomura would be into that. I think he wants to have total control over the story. I don't know why he bothers making a game. Actually, that's that's wrong. 
I would say that he is kind of, um, if he has anything to do with the battle systems, I like the battle system of 7 Remake. Not as good as 13, but it's really good. That was a big saving grace for me. I, I enjoyed fighting a lot in that game. So if he has anything to do with that, then... Then I respect that part of his game design. But his storytelling, I think, is just... Although it, it works for some people, so... That's fine. I just think stick to Kingdom Hearts and, and make new IPs. Don't, don't take... Don't take a story that has nothing to do with your crazy BS and put all your crazy BS into it. Final Fantasy VII was never about that crazy BS. And I know people be like, oh, actually it is Sephiroth and the people and what is he? He was creating a lab and all those druids walking around. No, no, all that stuff I think is pretty grounded. It's, it's like a sci-fi story that explains itself as it goes along. I think it stays rooted in its own rules. Be right around here. Ow. Sucking tired. Form an alliance to make a ritual to make you fall to the darkness. Only people could understand the ritual. Where is this bloody Ooh. thing? Chop. There's the bandit chopper. It's kind of hard to see individual things in this game because everything looks so realistic. Is it the same first three commands? It is actually. So you can kind of memorize them in groups. <laughs> this is good. Cool idea. Nice. Just in time for me to fill up my resolve. I definitely don't feel like finding three more of those. Shadow of the Samurai. All right, let's do it. Ah, but once we do that, what's going to happen to this map? Is it going to force me up to this part? Oh, 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 five of twenty-four. Toyotama, Kamiyagata. There are not many multi-platform games that you like, apart from Final Fantasy and Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, what about the game Inside? Have you ever played that? It's multi platforms one of the greatest games ever made. I don't know. I guess the capacity is pretty nice. Because... Oh. I haven't been killing predators. Tasukata. We will not get to use those. Okay. I feel like if I go here, there's... They're gonna... I'm not quite ready to do that. Legend of Tadayori. Moderate legend and armor. Sure. Why not? Could be why. If you just haven't been playing them, you're not going to get exposed to them. I should make my a list. We should uh, have a show of um, game. Oh, God. Does that look ever just lovely? Games of the Generation. I think my number one would probably be Breath of the Wild. Inside would have to be on there. Sekiro would have to be on there. Probably Bloodborne. I don't... Last of Us Part 2 would be a maybe, because I didn't really enjoy that. It's fun. There's a lot of games I see people writing articles about that are... Interesting. They're like, why sleeping dogs is the 
greatest video game crime drama. But then you actually play those games and you go, this is boring. Why Last of Us 2 subverts your expectations? <laughs> and you play it and go, yeah, this is interesting. But am I enjoying it? Witcher 3, your favorite game of all time. Oh, I love the writing in Witcher 3. But that's, I like a lot of what's going on there. Shouldn't these guys hang out? Stinking city. Too. That's a fun idea. I'm gonna. おもしろい話を知っておるよ。弓矢八幡の覚え糸目でたく海賊の星を尋ね来るを待つ。紫の冠という地が I could see this becoming a, a higher spot. You know, one of the like outside spots in my game in the generation. I haven't finished it, but it's uh, pretty drawn to it. Find the right crown. Okay, I will. Imagine there, <laughs> that crumbles under his weight. What clothes were on there? Now they're in the mud. Do you know how long it takes to clean clothes out here? I don't think I'd put Red Dead 2, even though it's really, really impressive. Impressive does not mean fun for me. Not necessarily, right? Oh, yeah, the Civ 6 stream? I might have deleted it because... We didn't really play. I tried to play with Lena. That was a huge mistake. Because I didn't really know how to play, and it just slows everything down. He's, you know, he wasn't moving very fast or teaching me anything. So, it just became a big mistake. And then we tried to play... Uh, what do you call it? Settlers of Catan with him, but he had no idea how to play that. And I wasn't... Trying to teach him how to play. It's hard. Ow. Oh, that's it. Just one of those. Cool. Yes, yeah, so I don't. I don't think uh, I got too far in it at all. Probably just a one-off episode. From a story, investigation, atmosphere, perspective. The gunplay is clunky, but really fun. There's a lot of clunky gameplay out there. I man, when I saw the idea of Sinking City, I was so down. And you know, maybe again, it's like one of those ones that I'm just not good at streaming and enjoying. What else would be? Maybe Uncharted Four? Probably Uncharted Four. 
Yeah, I tried to. Just ruined it. Witcher 3, Bloodborne, Yakuza 0, Devil May Cry. Yakuza 0? Yeah, I'd say I um, the highs of that game were fantastic. You know what? Actually, I might put up there too. Because there were like a few slow parts in Yakuza 0. But overall, I had a really great time with the combat and the story. Some of the story moments were unforgettable. And the combat was pretty fun. And the minigames and stuff were pretty fun too. Life is Strange. Actually, I'd probably put on my list. I'm going to add that to my list now. My phone's broken. I think I even... Oh, Firewatch. Splatoon. Fortnite. Minecraft. <sighs> oh, Titanfall 2. This will be a really fun list. Um, when I put Prey on there. Prey is a maybe. I think about Prey a lot. Maybe Death Stranding. Devil May... Uh, Devil May Cry. I, I have fun whacking through those. I think I, I think I lack the perfectionist quality. I, I'm just guessing, but is, is a lot of the enjoyment from Devil May Cry perfecting all the combos and stuff? And Because there's so much hacking and whacking. So is that, is that the whole point? Like, oh, you're always getting better and you're trying to get the longest combos and stuff. And while you're doing it, there's campy presentation. Kind of like with the original God of Wars. It's like, how many, how many hit combo can you get? Whereas I'm not, not really into that. I like to be okay at it. I don't need to be perfect. Neo 2 would be up there if you're better. Yeah. It's... Yeah, Neo... Um, Neo 1, I just... Uh, I have realized I'm not going to be good enough at this. And I don't really want to be. I didn't find it intriguing enough. To want to get better. Which must be frustrating for people that do like it. Because when I heard, you know, some people not want to get good at Sekiro, I thought, oh, it's so good. As long as they can respect that it's a good game, I think. That's the, that's the important thing. Like, I I get that Neo's a really well-made game. I just... And I enjoyed it quite a bit while I played it. I just got off the ride when I realized I'm not going to get good, as good enough for this game to really fully appreciate it. You know, to get to the point where you need to be for this. What are we doing? Swordsman? Spearman? Whoa! That kick is hilarious. Jumped. I held the wrong shoulder button and tried to switch to stone sense and ended up jumping in there like a moron. Those spears. Yes. The combat is so good, man. It was a mistake to play it on hard. Why did I choose hard? I think I had probably played a whole bunch of modern games in a row. And thought that I could handle hard. I think we were playing like Yakuza and stuff. Where hard really wasn't all that hard. I had a bit of an ego. Thinking I could, I could do this on hard. Yeah, big mistake. Because then I could have enjoyed the combos and stuff more. Maybe.
Hmm. Map updated. This lady's just gonna stare at me. Where you going? Travel to northern Ozum. You okay, Stell? I heard you sighing. You recommend God of War 2 and 3? So much better than 1 in terms of everything? Probably like really cool set pieces. I mean, that was the big thing with God of War 1 was... <clears throat> it... Games hadn't felt that epic before. With the way they had done the... Like, while you, with the camera angles and you were actually playing and controlling it. These huge set piece battles. Right? We hadn't seen that as a big difference. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll get to it. I pro I doubt it. I think there's a problem with this interface where it doesn't give me stereo sound. To like jiggle. It's a brand new interface. Everything I put in there, I gotta kind of jiggle around if I want to get the full sound. I really hate jiggling stuff. It was a cheap interface though. Yes, search for violet flowers. Who's this guy? <laughs> I sounded really offended that I killed him. Oh, that's fantastic. That feels really good. That's really satisfying. Looks great. Feels great. Which one's that, Daryl? Um, Neo 2 or Devil May Cry? The Witcher 3. It'd be a fun one to pick up and maybe blast through again. Not blast through, but that's kind of the maybe that's the problem is that with a lot of these games I do try to blast through them. I like to have a lot of forward momentum. When some of them need to just be relaxed with a little bit. How am I gonna get over there? Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah. I, I misread that as the... I don't think there's enough of it, though, to make your top list. Too simple, not many gameplay elements. Yeah, well, that's the thing. When you want to have a big open-world game, you kind of have to have quite a bit going on. Like, Red Dead, I found, I found pretty repetitive because... The writing was really great, and the polish and the cinematography and everything was ridiculously good. But every mission kind of always ended up being Dutch having a new plan, and then you do the new plan, and something goes wrong, and you have a shootout. And the shootouts weren't really that good. So, like when I think about playing Breath of the Wild, you can do combat if you want, but it's really not about the combat. And you can attack the enemies, not just with attacks, but um, bombs, traps, you know, magnetism, setting things on fire, arrows, all, like, just your, you can attack them with your creativity, which I really, really like. It's not going to be here. It's a postcard to the next place. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yeah, there's a map. Find the location on the map. Okay. A house with two decks, trees. Breath of the Wild is a very empty game with not a lot of side quests, though. Yeah, see, that's... I just really don't get that feeling from it. The... There weren't a lot of side quests where the game literally told you, this is what you have to do. 
Go there. Look on the map. You are now doing the side quest. The side quest is complete. It was more of a... You look out there... See, where this map, everything looks the same. Breath of the Wild would have something funny about that mountain over there. And you go over there and you discover something fun or funny or useful, entertaining in some way. And the way you got over there would be creative. And the way you would deal with it would be creative. That's the side quest. Not necessarily a story being told. It's just bloody house. Is that it? This is a little more... It's like so realistic that it's a little bit harder for them to make things look approachable. They kind of have to find different ways to motivate you to go look for them. I'm going to go look at that one. Yeah. Jesus Christ. He fell to his death. Yeah, it's about the discovery of it, but uh, yeah, the exploration, the discovery, but also, you know, like the gameplay of how you get there and then the challenges once you are there. Get up. It's just not linear. And that's why it's an open world game. Whereas a lot of these open world games, the area is open you choose which ones you do but when you do the quest it's very linear it's you're in an open area but all you're really doing is kind of going from you discover something but then all you do is the quest says go over there talk to that guy go here talk to that guy then go there and talk to that guy you are done and if it's not fun to traverse to get there or if it's not fun to deal with the enemies in between, and or if it's not entertaining from the story. Yeah, no, I see what you mean. Yeah, the towns could have maybe a bit more personality in them. I don't, yeah, I don't really think of the towns so much, other than the Zoro domain looking really nice and being sort of fun to swim around in. And it's one of the few ones that forces you down more of like a linear way of getting to. Uh, it did feel kind of like a chore, but it was it was nice to finally get there. Actually, all the um, all the towns in that game, like the Zora one, the Desert one, the Gorons, the Bird one, they all feel a little bit like a chore to get to, because they restrict you in some way. Kind of goes against what the game's all about. That looks nice. Wow. <laughs> well done. Yeah, they kind of restrict you until you get there and... Uh, kind of move on from it. Breath of the Wild is, for me has always been about exploring every nook and cranny and finding those many things. And those are the stories. The story that you create yourself playing and doing them. But I, I like that story that's weaved into a gameplay experience as opposed to... I mean, this, you know, like I've said, I, I really like the story and a lot of the Yakuza Zero stuff and some of the more story-based games, Last of Us. It has to be pretty exceptional, though, for it to carry just on the story alone. And I was reading about how a lot of writers are super undervalued by game developers. Where they bring them in as a... Uh, what are you guys doing? Being lazy? They bring them in as contract workers. Treat them treat them like they're just... Creating... Trees. You know? It's a story. It's supposed to be... So, in, so tied... So tightly woven in with the experience of it. Oh, Samurai... Oh, 
それにムクロは全て侍の太刀で切られているそうです怨霊ごときが太刀を握れるものか調べてこよう That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I see your point though about the, the towns and um, uh oh, Breath of the Wild. But I, I, I like that they don't give you the stables and the towns for quite a while. And they're only there kind of when you're ready to recharge, hear a bit of lore or something, and then move on. Are you the house I'm looking for? Trees, it's kind of a house. Oh, well, there's a fire. No, it's probably more this way. I'm gonna look look for a place that looks somewhat hidden. It's probably where it's gonna be. Yeah, I think they needed a bit more I don't know, like maybe a bit more fun way to get around. A few more things to do. It's beautiful. It's immersive. The combat's great. But it does feel like an amazing action game that's been stretched out into an open world. Although there's lots of stuff to, I guess, to stumble across and do a little mini games, and well, if you want to find the those shrines to increase your health, all that stuff, there's some more Mongols grabbing things along the way. Again, is the pointless small talk? Well, what I find in, in Breath of the Wild is that. I wouldn't say it's pointless small talk. That's how you you get hints. A lot of them will tell you they've seen something or heard of something, and they give you a clue, and then you go find it. There is some small talk for sure. That's just a bunch of crap. I mean, the point of it should either be it's going to be funny, or it's going to tell you more about that character. Or their experience, the place you're visiting, or they should give you a hint or something. Usually they tell you some tips, or they'll uh, tell you about like a secret you can go find. I'm going to kill some of these guys. Yes. You're an axe man. <laughs> when you found Lurlin Village, you're really excited to finding it, and the only real character the village had from the shop, some bit of location. Hmm, not interesting people. It's just a game telling you where to go. Meaningful things like on Gerudo, when you talk to secret shopkeeper, you find out lots of people started cross-dressing to get in. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's that's more of a... I guess I... I guess... I find that more interesting, is sort of like the puzzle of it. Finding some interesting stuff, and then figuring out where to go. In a way where that's not the game pointing you there. If they can combine it. Yeah, the Gerudo, that sort of flavor text, lore text was pretty interesting. Yeah, there's not really enough of that. You know, and I think a big problem with that is that they didn't... Uh, they didn't come up with any new races, you know? Other than maybe the bird people. But they were probably in Skyward Sword, I would imagine. But it's like the same Gorons. We know, Gorons eat rocks, they live in a fiery place. The water people, yeah, we get it, you live in the water. The Gerudos, instead of the cross-dressing female lead thing, that's pretty interesting. More to explore with that. But there's not the, um... Yeah, if they would have maybe been a bit more creative and come up with some new... New ideas. New races, they could have told some new stories. They played it a bit safe with that. Which is unfortunate, actually, yeah. Yeah, they could have used more... Yeah, more races, more, um... More enemy types, too. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess to me that's that stuff is. I guess games all have pot, have their strengths and weaknesses, and then it's basically how do you value those and how do you rank them. The the sheer joy of exploration in Breath of the Wild, and what you actually do in it, and how the gameplay works and the system works, is so that I value that so much that it puts the game at a, a 10 out of 10 for me. And then the lack of story is so far down on my list. You know. I mean, I think that's some of my favorite games. XCOM. There's not really much of a story. It's just the the, the encounters, right? The missions. The story is, is what you create in the missions, for me. Sending Lean out as a sniper up to a rooftop and watching him get murdered. And then going, whoopsie doopsie. You know, like, just coming up with new strategies and stuff. Coming across those three Mongols in the woods and doing, like, a the chain assassination. And something like Banner Saga that actually has constant story with every encounter while still having awesome decisions and great strategic combat. So it makes that game one of the best of the generation. Better add that to the list. Banner Saga. Hmm. So I guess, yeah, I guess that has a lot to do with it. Eh? It's like, what do you value? You know? So something like Kingdom Hearts where... I didn't really find the combat all that interesting. Because I only played the first one, so... It had PS2 level combat in it. But like Psychonauts. I didn't really f see. I can, yeah, see, that makes sense. Psychonauts is one of your all time favorite games, and I found it interesting. That has a ton. S all the stuff you were missing in Breath of the Wild reasons to care about the characters, knowing about their history and their story. I find that kind of interesting. But I don't, I don't really care. They're interesting stories, but I don't really play games for those kind of stories. Whereas, that was just stuffed. Every single character you met had a big, juicy story and, like, and a reason to care. And this is why they're sad and all that stuff. But then when it comes down to actually like jumping around the levels and playing, I'm thinking, this is kind of clunky it's good but I wish there was more more of the actual game I wish I learned more of the story through the game not necessarily just watching I don't know the cutscenes and finding some kind of like memory picture book or whatever it was so that makes sense find the location on the map it looks like a house and a road is that it? Oh, it kind of looks similar. Come here. So I guess that's what it comes down to, and that's people are going to have different tastes in games, and <laughs> movies, stories, what they want out of games. And games are so different. Than like a movie or a TV show. You can only experience a movie one way. You have to sit down, look at it, and listen to it. And you can want different things. You can want dialogue, you can want fear, you can want explosions and action. But you still have to take it in the right way. Games, there's this weird thing where you're looking at it. It could be more of a story heavy game. Can be challenging. Be 
challenging combat or challenging, I don't know, exploration or puzzles. They're all so different. It's a pretty big, it's pretty different experience playing The Witness. Or Erica. Or Mario. You know, or Death Stranding. Otter Games! You're able to find certain secret areas through exploring. Like Mila's demons, when she experienced an entire orphanage bringing down. While hearing all the children scream. Now, are you talking about in the war and like in the actual game world of Psychonauts? You find these areas and you and you see the orphanage, you see the memories, like you live their memories? Or is it those books that you find? Or you you look at their past? Trees house road oh. deers uh oh here comes the d-live crew the d-live crew is here to mess things not not mess shit up i meant that in a positive way this game is like the combat is like an easier Sekiro, or a slightly harder Batman. The exploration is like a much more focused, linear Breath of the Wild, with less systems. Uh, it's like a less detailed Red Dead Redemption 2 world. And it's very polished. It's got a very rewarding combat system and a pretty rewarding open world where you can upgrade a lot of different things and you can find a decent amount of variety of the things you can do. In the actual game world, you can find a hidden area that's burning with a lot of demons behind bars whispering how she wasn't able to save them. You can find a picture book there. Yeah. See, that's pretty interesting. Kind of like experiencing those memories and going through the world. That's pretty cool. Okay, I need to find where this bloody house is. I'm hiding behind a tree. I'm hiding behind a tree. Turn around. Do you care about the fireworks? Lack of interest in fireworks. That, that alert the other guys? I'm gonna throw another firework. Firecracker! Yes, you love firecrackers. Oh, what? Firecrackers? No, no, no. Hello from Greece, Dimitris Tsakiris. The side quests have some pretty significant rewards, armor, and new moves. Hmm. Follow the birdie. I love that. I just, I love following something in the world. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess that's kind of clear. Everybody has different preferences, but it is interesting that there's sort of different things you can value, you know? It's like when you're doing a personality test or for, like, employment or something. And they say, in order of preference. Do I follow these? This cart. It's all the flies. It's disgusting. What are you guys talking about? Uh,まずはお茶でもいかがでしょう。茶？アザモの菊は良い酒を作ると聞いたが。まあまあ。こちらへ。まあまあまあ。
progress in your current tale will be saved. I think I'll wait. I'm still looking for this bloody thing. <clears throat> I wish it got light. Is it ever going to become daytime? Find the building with stilts. And the house. And another cliff. Gonna go to bed and fall into the darkness. Oh, thank you, Master Felix. See you later. Thanks for the interesting chats. Breath of the Wild relies on a lot of environmental storytelling, but it's a lot less interesting than something like Bloodborne to you, because Bloodborne tells one story. Breath of the Wild tells very small details about a very large world. Hmm? Yeah, and I think that that fits with their overall... Why I think it's so strong thematically is that... The whole game... They made a decision that um, Breath of the Wild was going to be small chunks everywhere. And... Yeah, small little bits of story everywhere. Small bits of dungeon everywhere. Small bits of enemies. Of progression. And they did that because that's how they wanted an open world to be, right? So you can kind of control your satisfaction in, it, in the pacing. Of lots of, yeah, and it's lots of different stories that don't really all fade together. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, the story in Breath of the Wild is definitely not a, not a strength. I really couldn't even tell you what the story is. Other than Ganon comes... Every once in a while, the warrior wakes up. It's that stuff, uh, but it's just like such a... of low interest to in me. Yeah, they could have done a lot more with it. But I... but, uh, yeah, I'm... The, what they put their interest into is... what I like. So that's why... It, it's kind of like... It's almost silly to put a number on a game review other than saying how polished the game is the last of us part two is a 10 out of 10 in polish you know where it's um it's really it really just should be about do you like this kind of game characters to tell you their stories, learn about their backstory and stuff, and it'd be kind of weird and psychedelic, you'll like Psychonauts. Do you not care about story and just want systems to play around with? <coughs> Done in a charming way? Breath of the Wild. Do you need a really good story? You will not like this. You will not like this one bit. <laughs> So that's what it really comes down to. I'm the same with you, Daryl. I really, d I kind of dread going down into dungeons and tombs. It's so, like every once in a while, yeah, there is actually some memorable dungeons and tombs of, um, of uh, Skyrim. There's ones that had like some pretty interesting. Uh, oh crap! Oh, looks like he got over it. hard labor meet people in dungeons it's just the combat yeah that's right yeah you don't meet anybody there there's no it's not really much of like a world or anything to explore it's just it's just a nothingness I can't tell if that's where I was or not Keep going up to. Purple flowers. I'm sure it's easier to get along to get around. Oof, that's nice. Um Yeah, there was one one in Skyrim where you go into 
a pretty interesting tomb. There's some like uh, puzzles and stuff to figure out. But then I got to the end of it and there's a really super powerful mage guy that I've I've never been able to I haven't been able to beat him for like a year and a half or two years. You know. Do you wanna become famous? Do you wanna become famous? Buy your fame. It's funny how the one bot comes in and now there's so many of them. I guess because we didn't block the first one or something? Is that how that works? Uh, what's these? Crown of Violets. You were already there. Woo! I hope those bots stick around. Bring up my average viewership. Ooh. I can't seem to do that on my music streams for some reason. Bots are a bunch of losers. It must really work. If they have to spam it everywhere. そうか。体は動きますが、猛虎が川の上の辻から見張っとるんです。アザモの方には危うくて行きません。始末しておこう。See really like the idea of finding these uh these spots on the map. But I'm not very good at it. I don't know where I've been already. I find that this stuff kind of looks the same. You know? It's like, is that the last mountain I climbed up? Twice already? By a road. That's a road. to get up really high and have a look. You just transform into a powerful vampire with its own progression tree. Regular attack drains a lot of health and heals you. Huh. I mean, I guess it's kind of the point of the Elder Scrolls is to find a way to break it. Alright, this is the Crown of Violence. What's that over there? That could be it. Is that it? That might be it. No, no, no. Totally gonna lose my bearings on the way down. Don't 
Vampire marriage. Supplies. Twenty five supplies. <laughs> I have wrestling? <laughs> what the hell? Did you do a lot of these ones, Daryl? These find it on the find it in the world missions? I love the I love the idea of them. I'm not very good at it. I think I get kind of distracted about the environment. Bots, yeah. Way to go, bots. We got Nightbot smacking him down, so it's fine. Fine by me. There's no purple flowers here, you fool. You're out of the map. You got me. Kind of wish I had like a yeah, some kind of a telescope. Did all of them? Oh, there's only like six or seven? Oh, interesting. There's no quick way down. <clears throat> it's got a travel ad. Turn to the search area. Okay, search area. I don't think that's it. I have no clue if that's where I was before. Let the horse die. Pretty impressive how they have these bots going out and doing all this work and then knowing where to go. And I'm getting more followers just by these bots. And it's free. Maybe that's the way to go. Ten? Are they all in, are they all in at the same time? Oh, like half hour? Why? Why you want to do something? Oh, great. Okay, where the hell is this place? Off to the right, eh? P 
Justin. Yeah. So you don't get anything from the deer. They're not a predator. Oh, man. Okay. What the hell are we doing here? <laughs> That's the crown of violets. So you think it'd be somewhere around here, you know? Find the location on the map. Hmm. It's interesting with a game like this, I find this like my rating of it, enjoyment of it, kind of goes up and down depending on how long you spend doing each thing and how it's paced out. I guess that choice is up to me. How long, how long I uh, spend on this part, right? Thirteen bots, give it up, ring that bell. How wonderful. I wonder if you if you actually go to their site and click on it. If they'll even give you 13 bots. We'll offer you seven. Seven bots. That's all we can do. Best we can do. Really? I feel like you could do more. Oh, here's a lot of purple flowers. Did I just need to go directly to where the magnifying glass was? I didn't I didn't know. I thought the magnifying glass was sort of arbitrarily placed in the middle. I didn't know you just literally went to the magnifying glass. That makes it a little easy. Yeah, there's the... Uh, I don't know if that's the house with two stilts on it. it does, it's like a double house, though. Purple flowers. <laughs> um, I'm going to IGA. Do you need anything? Oh, IGA? Um, looks to all your boobs are on camera. Okay. <laughs> Just, uh, here, I'll text you. These are different. Oh, yeah. These look nice. You like them? That's good. Beads. I'll say sugar-free almond milk or whatever, sugar-free dairy alternative, uh, tofu. God, do I sound like a yuppie right now? What else? You just need a kid named Hemp. Evan Healy. Hmm. We have enough pineapple. Maybe some like fruit or berries if ch if cheap. Okay, then no. What happened to Thomas like the day we I don't know. Okay, bye. bye. All right. Ah, so pretty. They charge seventy dollars for fifty subscribers and a hundred dollars for thirty thousand. Followers. No, thank you. Oh. Oh yeah, they don't have gin or tequila there, eh? If they have Guinness, I'll take Guinness in the cans. Seventy dollars for fifty subs on Twitch, and then a hundred dollars. But or is it for YouTube? Fifty subscribers. That sucks. A hundred dollars for thirty thousand followers. Followers of what? Big follows, big, big, big follows. Prince, did you actually click on that link? You are a brave man. Thank you for doing that investigative journalism for us. I feel so stupid that I thought that this was just arbitrary and you should actually explore the whole area. No, they just tell you exactly where to go. Been drinking it all day? And still spelling properly. I like Guinness. It's actually, it's got like the flavor of a nice dark kind of stout, but it's actually pretty light. Low in the calories too, comparatively speaking. I wish that deer just knocked me over. That would have been awesome. Huh. You get nothing for killing deer. Now with a game like this, 
I'm really motivated by what I get out of it, you know. There's no story to killing the deer, but I'll kill the I'll kill the predators if I get stuff, you know. If I can upgrade my ammo capacity. You drink draught? What does that mean? Guinness draught? Hey, there's the thing. <laughs> so weird that part of this game is first person. Very, very small part. Whereas The Last of Us, they have that really close up thing which lends itself to jump scares. Yeah. How do they find this place? Map. Oh, a map. Give me the map. Squeeze me through. Give me a place. It's so beautiful. Where are we on this map? Oh, beautiful and hidden. Hidden so well. Investigate the cemetery. What are you gonna go take some? You gonna go take some items from the cemetery? The people left his presents. You jerk. Hmm. High quality, real names. Most accounts of avatars. Most. I like how it's just most. <laughs> I'm honestly getting. I really wish these guys would attack my uh, music profile. And then I'd get the, I'd have, okay, they could sit on my account for a few hours while I'm streaming and then I'll get affiliate status. Be great. Then potentially more visibility that way. Okay, well, let's fight, lady. I'll chop off your bloody head. The duel. Tadayori's list. <clears throat> I didn't know becoming famous was a casual impulse buy. You want to become famous? Um, yeah, I'm kind of bored. I'll become famous. Change the rest of your life. Now you're famous. I agree with her. I think it's kind of easier to just like whole block, wait for a combo. And then it's easier to parry the second one, you know? It's pretty cool with the model. Oh, you're the one who's picking the fight. Eat it. Oh, I like her costume. It's all over the place. サムライはすべて殺された時、敵、墓荒らしかと。俗ではないが、ご先祖の鎧を探しておる。あなたにお譲りできれば良いのですが、鎧は行方知れずで。探す手立てはないのか。古い書に、こんな一文があります。ただよ
Well, I knew that lady. We all knew that. I don't think they count as a... <clears throat> I don't think they stay on as followers, though. They're not watching. Buying them still doesn't mean you get actual interactions, though. Even if the large amount of known comments are fine, it doesn't matter. You know when you find a helpful video, like for actually, for example, we have a video. It's like a hard drive error people get on PS4. <sighs> and how to fix it? We have lots of views on it. It works. Lots of great comments. But because the rest of our channel has nothing to do with that, they don't sub. <laughs> Why would they? Maybe they do. Maybe some of them do. There's no point, though, for them. Go here. Azumobe. Azumobe. Yeah. I cut my hair again. I think the sides and the back look better. Still got this weird slant down there. Boy, they're really um, all over the place, eh? There's too many of them. How can I get them? Uh, I could. What could I do on Twitch? On Twitch, can't you. Can't you limit people posting links? Or put like a Twitch slow mode or something? <clears throat> Let's see. Let's see. I deleted a message from the chat entirely. We show a minimal log. Sure. That's great. That'll work. How about get rid of bots? Subscriber only chat. Follower only chat. There you go. Followers can chat if they followed for followers only. I was just like, like, horky to be chatting. Horky. YouTube needs that subscriber only chat. Yeah, it does. Oh my god. There's this girl that, um. Oh god. She loves to sing. She has the ability to sing, like, big notes and stuff. <laughs> But, um, her, her pitch is either sometimes really good, or sometimes awful. It's kind of hard to even, like, predict. Can't see. What is with... <sighs> I'm gonna blame the, the auto lock on that. Camera, like, wrote, send you away. I'm looking over here. Uh, uh. This is better. Um, and on her Twitter, yeah. So she and she's kind of one of these people that like really, really wants attention. Very sort of shameless in asking you to support her, come to her shows. Will like host an open mic, and then um will call that a show. You've got a gig! When well, you're hosting an open mic, it's not really a gig. My band is a gig! We're hosting the open mic! No, you, you guys are gonna play like free songs at the beginning and then 
you should get out, out of the way and let everyone else come perform. Place him at the end. It's not a gig. Stop treating it like it. It's it's supposed to be this sharing experience. Anyway, I looked under like Twitter, Instagram, and it was like in the description: follow for follow, like for like. And that's just kind of that mentality of let's all support each other. Why does it sound so bad when I'm complaining about it? Oh, you think supporting each other is a bad thing? No, I don't. But it's more like the desperation of it makes it seem like it's not worth following or supporting. You know? Nintendo games have a perceived amount of value because they never feel the need to discount them. So they seem more valuable. I feel sm I feel better about paying full price for a brand new Nintendo Switch game because I know that next week it's not going to... They're not going to discount it 60%. You know? Whereas... We're all, we're all like, oh, should we get a PS5? There might be a PS5 Pro in a year. Or they might slash the price. Or should I buy God of War? Or is it just going to be $20 in a couple years? You know? Especially when I'm buying them digitally. It's like... Can I up really quickly upgrade my... Nope. My showdown. It, yeah. Thousands of viewers and no chat. You see that on like... Um, I got a way to be. Be smart. Ah, I suck. <clears throat> yeah. Like I was saying, I like when um, you'll see sort of like a YouTube account. They have one useful kind of video and then... But it's like the production of it is so terrible. The video itself will have 2 million views because it's useful. But then the production and the person talking, you're like, eh, not sticking around for this. Yeah, the bluffs are killing me. It's too much quick movement. You have to react so fast. That's true, yeah. The only thing you could advertise is stuff that's for people trying to get follows. What's this house all... See, now this is interesting. A house sort of crumbled and bumbled. So, can I go in through this little window here? No. But you can look through and see there's probably something worth on the other side, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It kind of looks like Link as he's crawling up. Sort of doesn't feel like I should be up here. Okay, here we go. What's in there now? You're not gonna let me in? What the fuck? Is it just for decoration? That's it and that's all? <laughs> Disappointing. <laughs> Maybe I have to go through here. Go in the way we tell you. Don't go climbing stuff. It's not Breath of the Wild. We don't know how they did that. Don't. I think I have to crank up the brightness on my TV. It's because I have so much window now. It has... I have, I'm so lucky. I've got this gigantic window on one side. It's probably about 12 feet long. And about 5 foot window on the other side. And then in between them is this wall uh, with no window. And that's where I put the TV. Because I like... Windows. God, I just had an idea. What if I put the TV a little higher and then had the computer's monitors below it? Oh, be genius. Yeah, they create a delusion of popularity. It's too bad. I think a big problem we have is that the general... This might sound awful to say, but... I think the, the, the general average of intelligence has gone way down because, you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, you had to be kind of smart to survive. And the dumb people would die and they wouldn't have babies. They wouldn't pass their DNA on, they'd die. Or if they were too weak. And now... 
everyone survives in a first world country and they can have 10 babies and they're just flooding the market with their stupidity and their stupid kids and they're, there's warning labels and everything and there's safety rails and they don't die and then really smart people are having zero babies or one and they're not passing their DNA along, and it's getting watered down with dummies. It gets a big problem. And I think we see the effects of it where you see like people getting voted into office and decisions being made, and you go, Who who are these people voting? What the hell is happening here? Why are people doing this? Are they stupid? Yes. Yes, they are. Very. Where is that archer? Got a lot of these arrows. If I could sneak up there. Isn't there an archer or something over here? Can I just... Oh, who's this other guy looking at me? Someone's looking at me over there. Oh, that guy. I see you looking at me. I see you looking at me. Gonna do coming at the wrong angle. These guys do a lot of screaming. Uh oh. Huh? Ah. <laughs> oh man. Let me just walk fast enough to get away from this guy. Intelligence in something is predetermined at birth. Everyone has the ability to learn to become intelligent because of the brain's neuroplasticity. The issue is the education system itself. That's an interesting way of looking at it. That's a positive way of looking at it. And you know, that does... That does um, go along with something that I already believed in, so I'm more likely to believe it. That affirms something I believed before! I like it! But, uh... When I think about... I don't think... People are born uh, racist and angry. My point was like the people that become police and are doing these terrible things. I don't think that they are born that way. I don't think they even become police officers to do that kind of stuff. But I do believe that the nature of the job is making them uh, become total jerks and hate people. And it's... I, I actually almost don't believe that anybody intends to be bad or do bad things. I think that... I think it's just all a byproduct of basically everything. Shield. I can't remember. Is that water stance? Wind stance? You were born crap at 2D platformers? Yeah, well, okay, here's an argument against this whole, like, brain plasticity thing is that I think that there are like you can improve in anything but there is there is a part of you that 
there's going to be limits. Whether that's... No matter how hard you try, you might not... You're probably not ever going to be... If, like... Okay, someone who's like an Olympic swimmer. If somebody else trained just as much as they did. I still think that there's a like a limit. You can still train and become better than you were. But your nature, I think, dictates how much you can improve. And you'll still hit a limit. Or you'll improve slower. I, th I still think that there's going to be people that are naturally better at something. And naturally being better at something is going to make you more willing to want to do it. I think because I have I have a natural talent towards music, it's made me practicing music more fun. So I do it more. So it just kind of keeps fulfilling itself. I'm not naturally good at dancing, so when I do dance, it's not really all that fun and makes me feel kind of bad. Okay, who is killing the musician? Oh, he's gonna kill him. I see, I see, I see. That's good. Uh oh. Nice. So there's what? S stone is for swordsmen? And what? A water is for these guys? And their big shields? And the wind is for spearmen and axe. I don't know. I mean, I I watch young kids, and they're working on art or something. And I mean, some kids just seem better at it than others. You can still learn and practice, but there's you're just going to advance so much faster if you have a predilection towards it. I think everybody can get better. You just have something in you that will make you get better faster. And probably reach farther. I don't believe that's true. Everyone is not terrible at things when they first start. I, I watch kids like with Stella and they're, they're like four and five years old. And their art is interesting and good. And relative to their age, they're better than... They probably... But I think it still comes down to like being predisposed towards art. Probably for those first five years of their life, they probably draw all the time. Vida! Seize day! Which bot is it? Not that I care. Why do I care about a bot? Well, welcome, Vita. There's Prince. There's Daryl. There's Felix. There's myself. There's more out there in the world than just D-Live, my friend. Mozart wrote his first symphony when he was five. Yeah. And I mean, he probably was terrible at symphonies when he was zero days old. But I bet you by the time he's three days old, he was getting better already. There's there's both. Like, Mozart needed to study music to get better at it. This game is nice! Mozart needed to study music to get better at it. But he got better at it a lot faster than everybody else. The artistry is incredible. What does it give you? Knocking and reload. How dare you? Put that on me. How dare you? Increase total concentration time. Headshots. I don't want that shit. I want reduce enemy detection speed. And melee damage. That's what I want. I don't want. Resolve for getting hit. Reduce damage. Increase your health and get resolve from getting hit. This is beginner's armor. Reduced the, the enemy detection speed, I think, is also kind of a beginner's thing, too. 
Stay back, musician. I will protect you like plants versus zombies. What are you guys doing? Black. That's a good, yeah, that's a good point, Daryl. I think there's both when it comes to nature and nurture. Things that happen to you will affect you, but depending on who you are, they're going to affect you in different ways. You know, getting abused or something is going to change who you are. For some people, it's going to turn them into an abuser. Um, other people, it's going to make them never want to abuse, right? It just changes all the time. The father of modern neuroscience was at first terrible at school and didn't have a good memory. He found a way to learn in a way that worked for him and became one of the most influential figures. Wind stance is effective. Use your wind stance. Okay, I'm holding R2. Let me do it. Let me do it. I give him the old whipply dipply. <laughs> that actually works pretty well. But I, I guess, I mean, and there's a, like lots of different types of people and different types of learning. and You know, like, they say Einstein has a very powerful brain. But a slow brain. So he was bad in school and, um... He would have been bad at, say, like an IQ test. But in, you know, other ways he was a bloody genius. Right? Like, Stella's got a... A strong dyslexia and it really affects how she reads and how she learns. And she had to find her own ways of dealing with that. I have, a, I have a natural, for many things, I can pick information up and, you know, like a lot of school is pretty easy for me and I can put in very little effort to do much better than other people, you know. But I was bad at other things, like I was really bad at time management and, um, like, okay, I had, the, we had this history class. I'm not saying you can't learn anything. Yeah, like, I agree. You can definitely learn anything if you put your mind to it, absolutely. But there's still gonna be a limit to what you can learn. That a natural predilection towards it is gonna get you above and beyond. Like, we, we had this history class and uh, we did quizzes all the time and tests. And I was pretty good at just remembering whatever the guy s said to me in the class. And kind of figuring out how to... You can, like, find answers by, you know, if it's multiple choice and stuff. And I just, like, destroyed on tests. And this girl who sat next to me studied for hours and hours and hours. And just her brain could not... She didn't know how to help herself absorb the knowledge and she did terrible on tests and she tried so hard but every day the teacher said i need you to go home and i need you to it was a small task you need to remember to do this one thing write it down bring it in the next day at the beginning of the class he'd say hand that thing in and i'm like oh it would have been so easy but the whole the actual task was easy but it was the point of remembering to do it at home and bring it in the next day and i failed all that stuff even though it didn't require knowledge, but it required the ability to plan ahead and be organized. And that's what I sucked at. And there's just like a lot of different intelligences. I could have worked on that and got better at it. But I never felt the need to. And I didn't care. What was the thing I was going to put the point into? Oh, challenging. Killing more people to challenge. 
Ciao, Nicolo. But yeah, I'd say overall, I agree with your point, Prince, that you can really do just about anything within reason if you find what works for you and do it. Put the work in. Yeah, you're not going to be... If you don't have what a Mozart had, you're not going to get to that level. Barbara Oakley was terrible at math and hated those kind of subjects, but she got a PhD in engineering. And then she built a house and a bridge and it exploded. They said, we'd never seen that before. Typhoon kicks. I don't give a shit about a typhoon kick. Hmm. Well, that's inspiring stuff. Now, I guess there's a part of her that has that ambition as well. That's another thing. Can you teach ambition and focus and drive and determination? Is that something you're sort of born with? Because there's a lot of people that will give up on something too, right? I guess it's just the, uh, that's what makes everybody unique. What should I put these points into? Terrifying Perry. That would make things a little easier. How about... Something with a stance. That could be fun. Ferocious speed. The father of modern neurosciences didn't have a natural talent for it, but still ended up as the most influential figure in the field. He just learned in a unique way, which gave him a different perspective on some things. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty inspiring that you can... If you want to. It's interesting what would make him want to keep on pushing towards it if he doesn't have the natural talent to it. But isn't that kind of a... Isn't that at odds with itself? He didn't have a natural talent for it, but he became the influential figure in the field. So he had a talent for something. He just didn't have a talent for like learning in the traditional way. I think that's kind of the main thing is that uh, the way things are taught in schools generally you tend to reward people for doing things a certain way. And if you aren't good at that, you're going to struggle. Unless you really put in the work. Work can really overcome a lot of things. Really can. And then it becomes, are you motivated to do, uh, to do it? Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Unfinished business. Just a little Mongol Osmo Bay. What's that one over here? A little red spot. The Tangled Crossroads. Ooh, iron. And stance. That's cool. Stance progress. Sure. I was watching a cool movie with, um, about this woman who came up with a lot of techniques about how to, uh, work with animals. You know, in slaughterhouses and stuff. Because she understood that they were psychologically affected. The way that they were moving these cows around. And she, had, she was autistic and sort of drew on her own experiences of what would make her calm. 
She had like a contraption she'd put herself in to make herself calm. She found that the and then she used that and applied it to the cows. And rewarding that different kinds of thinking. It's something that needs to be it needs to happen more. I remember I was working with, um, the Tangled Crossroads. No Bowman. Oh, you guys have picked the wrong day to be taking a break. Kill enemies with a longbow. But yeah, she had a different, different perspective on it that nobody else had even thought of. And it was because of a very unique perspective she had. Compared to most people in that industry. He got interested in being a doctor because his dad got him interested in it by showing him what real bodies looked like. They went off secretly at night to find bodies in the graveyards. <laughs> wow. And then he would draw different parts of the body. So what would the father of modern neuroscience be doing? It would be sort of like how the brain works and... What, like, anxieties and neurological disorders and that kind of stuff? I'm observing you. I'm observing the R2 button. Moon stance. I think you can tell a lot about what people are really interested in by what they draw when they're younger. Being able to see, touch, and draw what he was learning about captured his interest. As opposed to just like reading it in a book. Critical strike. Watch his Betty! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. When I learn, I like to learn how you do it wrong. All the, re all the things you're not supposed to do. And then that informs me uh, why you do something. So I'm not, uh, I don't like learning when people go, oh, we do it like this. Why? Why don't you do it like that? And then, well, we don't do it like that because then it's... You don't tie the knot like that because then uh, it takes too long when you want to untie it or whatever. Or it puts the stress in the wrong spot or something. And then once I... Yeah, that helps me kind of piece together the puzzle of why something, how it works. And then why you would have this as a solution and then maybe you can find a better solution. I was watching my uncle... Well, I was helping him build a deck for my grandmother. And he was trying to figure out a solution to something. And I said, why don't you just... Why don't you put that there? I can't remember what it was, but I remember him looking at me like... We would... He would never do that. That doesn't make any sense. And then he was trying to fix the problem, trying to fix the problem. And then I noticed a half an hour later... He was doing my suggestion, but they didn't tell me. And then I... But I noticed. So what you doing there, Uncle Jack? Using my idea? You know, but it's a different perspective. Because I... Because I didn't work in construction, I hadn't been doing it a certain way for a long time. So it's... You can kind of come at it with fresh eyes, you know. First went back to mathematics and science studies he missed when he was younger, then decided to study and became a professor of pathology. Cool. Very nice. It is inspiring that if you really put the effort into it, you basically can do... You can improve in almost anything if you if you put in the effort. I mean, yeah, you're not going to become a Mozart if you don't have that. I guess that was more my point, to become like a true master if you don't have that predilection. He did have something in him that let him become a master kind of of his own way of looking at it, just a different way. Well, I guess he actually like kind of cre- he probably cre- I don't know. I don't know anything about this guy that what you're telling me. Because well, he's teaching, other people are learning. So he had a different perspective, and then 
was able to uh, kind of create something different for people to uh, look at and learn. That can really limit people as a perspective as well. So having a perceived weakness can be a different perspective, which is a strength in another way. Hey, guy. There's no lock on. There's no bloody lock on. There's no soft lock on. And if there is, it's awful. Soft lock on. Yeah, it sounds like something a developer would say after the point. It's real soft. How soft is it? Well, it makes clouds seem like bricks. That's how soft it is. Masahiro T. Thank you for protecting Japan from the invasion of the Mongolian for the forces. Iedo itashimaste. That means you're welcome. He had to pass tests to become a professor, which also failed twice in passing the third attempt. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying. Is like a lot of the, a lot of, what can limit people is the way that they teach and the way that they test. Where it might not even be in, you know, using those kind of practical skills. Tests are for people that can like learn a certain way and then can execute their knowledge by say like reading a test and answering that test which for a lot of people they might be a they might be like have a great uh, ability at doing something but putting it on a on a written test or reading a question even is going to be very difficult for them but it doesn't affect their uh, their ability to do or teach or, or their value. Dojo, Dojo, press block, press block. Speed heavy attack. That's cool. That's pretty fast. It's quite ferocious. Now, if that father of modern neurosciences didn't have a natural interest in those things, could he have gotten to that level? Santiago, Ramon, e Cajal. So if Santiago, Ramon, e Cajal didn't have a natural interest in looking at dead body parts, would he have put in the, uh, the time to become the father of modern neurosciences? So is, is that a natural predilection towards something? Interest. I remember my parents got me... They knew I was really into Shadowrun. I read the books. I liked the game. So my mom bought me the Shadowrun D&D book with all the rules in it. And I would just create characters. I never played it. But I loved creating the characters, fiddling with the numbers and stuff, writing. My dad was like, Man, if you spent as much time doing your homework as you did with that book, you would get really good grades. I'd go, yeah. I guess if school was as interesting as this book. But you tend to follow things you're interested in learning about. I mean, you can talk to a guy who's really, really into sports. 
And he'll memorize uh, a bunch of stats, you know, how many goals, how many points people get. And the amount of knowledge they have on it is really impressive, right? And it's useless. <laughs> well, not useless. But it's more of a vanity thing. It's useful if they're going to be entertaining people with sports knowledge. Or if they're going to work for, like, a team to make money or something. But, uh... It's, it's a niche thing. I guess I'm mostly speaking for myself where when things are like really difficult to learn, I, I tend to drop off of them, right? Why would you spend time learning a profession you don't even like willingly? What if it, what if it, uh, helped save the human race? What if you weren't really good at or weren't interested in designing rockets that go to Mars, but we needed everyone to do that. What about them? Or to become farmers. There's a world, there's a food shortage. There's a food shortage, Prince. We need you to become a farmer. I don't want to become a farmer. Everyone needs to become a farmer. That's why. What's this guy doing? Picking up mud. Grass. Are you supposed to be somewhere else? He's collecting grass. Tons of Asian parents force their children to become doctors, and a lot of them do after which they change. Ah, you know what, Prince? That is a really good point. That's a really good point. They might... Oh, you know what? That's the winning argument there. Whatever it was I was holding out against. The amount of learning you would have to do to become a doctor or a PhD in something. Even if you had no natural... Oh, could you imagine how torturous that would be? To spend your whole life learning something you don't want and then just changing... Changing at the end of it? No, I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't want it. No. I change. No, I'm a pastry chef. That was a really good point, Prince. They probably still have to have some capability, though. Because there's people that really want to do those things that can't. I think. Maybe not. I don't know what I'm basing that on. I'm basing that on a girl I knew that was quite smart, quite organized. She wanted to be an astronaut. She sort of spent her first, like, 30 years of her life trying to be an astronaut. And then she got to a point where she's like, eh, I don't think it's going to work. And she's changed it up. But that's more of, like, an opportunity thing, I guess. It's not a lot of job opportunities for astronauts. This guy was collecting some doit. Yeah, if somebody could become a doctor and not even want to. Roll! Safety roll! Ah. The weather is better. Where am I going? You fall on the ground. Ashley Seofani, that was their name. So many people's names in high school I remember. Looking through yearbooks, looking at their names. Remember their little picture? That's why I was really good at tests and stuff, because I could tend to remember names and information. Pierre, let's fight! モーコは年寄りを痛めつけてるんです。ある捕虜が逃げた罰として痛めつけて何になる。で、どこに捕らわれた一人は神社。後の二人は家の中に。いかにして入る。門は開かぬぞ。正門の近くに隙間が。子供
Have you seen it? It's hard to see without my face. Well, Prince, I really enjoyed the arc of that conversation. I know that I was being... I was being stubborn. But you, uh... You had a lot of great information and you won me over. Can't deny it. Ooh, it's like friggin' black and white and crazy in here. Do I have a technique point? There was one technique of like... Kill more people when you do a... Thingy wingy. The, the bluff game. But I don't want to do that anyway. Cause I'm not good at it! That's a me thing. I think almost everything I was probably talking about had to do more with my own personal feelings on something. That I seem to have a natural talent for a lot of things, but when something is difficult, I tend to just stop. Because I'm lazy. I'm a lazy perfectionist. I want it to, kind of, to be really good or I'll just not do it. After I played for two years with a really good piano player... He had Asperger's Syndrome. Wonderful guy. And he got drunk and he told me that he was slightly jealous of my natural ability in music to pick things up really fast. But that he was annoyed by how lazy I was. Because he had to he had to learn what he knew from music through like repetition Writing things down. Um, and just going over it and over it and over it. But he had a hard time being creative or like free-flowing. But he had the knowledge of what worked where and how to plug that thing in. And he could show me things really quick and I could do... Not a great, not a perfect version of it, but I could do sort of my own interpretation of it in a way that worked. You know? Whether you're showing me different musical styles or songs and stuff. Jazz songs. Oh yeah, that's the biggest thing is that... The hardest... The hardest thing to convince somebody is that people usually don't like being wrong. My friend, um... He was doing a... He was training somebody in something. And... Um, he spent a lot of years learning the subject. But it's a subject that a lot that a lot of people think they know a lot about. But he feels that he's, he spent more years learning the scientific way of doing it. Unchain wolf! Don't worry, buddy. So, people will tell him, I, w I don't want to do like this because of this. And he'll go, actually, no, that's wrong. And the science behind it is this. And I was telling him, when you're dealing with, like, different guys who don't want to be proved wrong, the best thing to do is go agree with their sentiment. You go like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. We don't want this, and then here's a good way of doing it. Because people don't want to be wrong right away. I know, I don't. Run! We beat him! Yeah! Step on his butt! Ho -ho 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 -ho. That was nice. Yeah, a lot of a lot of arguments are not uh, logical in any way. It's just people go, I don't want to believe anything different. That doesn't go with what I know. And um, I'm going to stay this way. It's why, like, politics and religion. It's hard to... You're not going to convince somebody... Say somebody loves a certain politician. And you are telling them reasons why that politician is wrong. They're not going to... They're just... They're not going to believe you and they're not going to care. But if you had if you had removed the person that they really like and said, Oh my god, did you hear about this other person? Did you do one of these things? 
You might be like, what? That's insane. I'm gonna go actually that's the person uh Well oh, what if you turned it on them? It was you. You know? Nobody likes to think that what they're doing is in is wrong, but in a lot of times it's just not intentionally wrong. Like think of this. Do you do you want to financially support an industry that requires children to work in a sweatshop manufacturing clothes? No. How about how about people being exploited and having to work in mines that are dangerous? They're dying. No, I don't want to support that. Okay, you need to stop buying clothes at the at the price you're paying. <laughs> And you need to stop buying smartphones at the price you're paying. Oh, but I want them. Okay, well. It's just... It's like, if, if every day you had to watch a video of some kid in a factory making the phone you used, or your clothes. If every day you had to watch that video. You'd probably eventually just... Be like, oh, I can't enough. Don't want to know about this. <laughs> oh, give me the red and a combo. I think it's important to embrace complexity when you're proven wrong with research and data to be aroused at the idea. Yeah. You need to you need to think of learning something new as like um Shit. As an opportunity to be better. But a lot of people you know what a big problem with debating is? The, there's being really good at debating doesn't necessarily mean you're really, uh, doesn't really, doesn't necessarily mean you have a lot of knowledge to offer the world on that topic, but you can be really good at debating. Estella is better in a, in a quick argument. Estella's just too fast for me. And too persuasive. And then, and then I think about it on my own after and I go, oh, wait, I actually don't believe what you said. But in the moment, it's too fast for me. I mean, she, she wins. She too smart. Huh? I'm gonna kill you these bows because I've invested bows in you. Don't show. Don't show. Faux show! Faux show! Faux show! God, I hope one day in my life I hear a Mongolian say Dosho. And I go, wait a second. Duck! There's an arrow coming our way. The Mongolian's trying to tell us to duck. Duck! No, jerk off. Yes. Ah! Something you can work on if you want to get better at debating her. I guess so. I, I would like put myself through drills. Tad, I, I, do, I don't. 
I need to learn the logic of a good argument. Because I'm, I'm not very persuasive. In, in a quick manner. It's something I... Uh, it's something I learned about myself when I was working with uh, kids at the Boys and Girls Club. When it came to explaining an idea really quickly, I lose people. I lose a lot of... I lose the group. I don't know how to bluntly put it in a way because I don't want it to be incorrect. Sometimes you need to say things that might be partially incorrect in a way that gets the overall message across. It's kind of like when someone's speaking a second language and they're not necessarily communicating the idea properly. But it make but you understand. I had a Brazilian friend, and sometimes what he would say didn't really make sense technically, like if he just kind of wrote it down. But I understood him when he was talking. Serene! Serene, I liked your uh, Instagram stuff. You were actually in the daylight with your friend. You look really happy. A lot of your pictures are you're in the dark. And I wonder, what is she doing in the dark? Does she have lights? Aren't there hostages up here before? Oh, that's cool. It'd be cool if you're good friends with your neighbor and you built a bridge like this across their house. No. Yes. You have so many smoke bombs. Usually in your home, that's why. And I'm a vampire. Don't. The lack of lock on sucks. Enjoy! Thanks for the uh, talks, Prince. See you later. She's a photographer friend, I modeled for her. Oh, nice. Ah, maybe that influenced why the photos were so nice. I was trying to hit the other guy that was going to kill that guy, but it just could does a. I guess I could have maybe. I tried to aim away from him, but did no work. Mm, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Kimbo, Kimbo, Yahoo. No. Yeah. It's a wind chime. Kurva. Sounds like he's saying whore or something. Kurva. Kurva nyada. Your mother is a whore. It's like beautiful fishing contraptions. So I think if you walk up, not crouch, baby. See you Wednesday, buddy. Looking forward to hearing these uh, eight-bit jams. Suck it. Seems to be an optimal way to progress to this village. Just walk up behind. Stabbing somebody through the head before you even see what they look like or who they are. Could be your friend. Could be your soulmate. No, they're Mongols. No Mongol soulmates. Okay. Fine. No Mongol soulmates. Are you sure? What if it's love at first sight? No! No Mongol love at first sight. If they're wearing the enemy's colors, no love at first sight. Really. You're gonna potentially stab 
the love of your life. That didn't work out very well. Play flute. No flute playing in emergencies. Smoke bomb it out. Get that wind chime ready. I think the game wants me to kind of go over this way and stab them all as I go. Just go to where you see someone's back. That's where you go. That's what you do. That's how you do it. What time is it? Five! I should stop playing in like 15 minutes. F this village. It's just so easy to keep going to this game. Don't really have to pay attention to much. You just go and stabby wabby. Looks fun. Not that punishing to lose. If something's frustrating, you can just change what you're doing. Do you like wind chimes? Yukfur is in a very interesting place called Anafiotika. Cool. You can walk right at these guys. Stab them. They can even see you. But if you press the assassin, it doesn't matter. What is that guy? <laughs> stealth games. Any game with stealth is going to have some enemies looking in really weird places. Oh man. Save them. No. No. His face looks about 70, but his skin is the skin of like a five-week-year-old. Three Mongol leaders, three villagers in caves, three village elders. We did some research. People like things in threes. It's enough to be challenging. It's not too much that they'll stop doing it. Should be three groups of threes? No. About five. It's a little, that's quite a lot. It's a lot of threes. Why, that's 18 of them. What's the place all about? Anafiotika. Sounds like a breathing condition. I have Anafiotika. I have to. Be very careful with my intake of corn. Or I'll go into anaphyotic shock. It causes me to shake violently and act like an anaconda. So, please, is there corn in here? Yo, dude. 
I'm sneaking around you. Oh, he's doing a little bit of hammering. A little improvement. We met through an online game back in Alamantra School. She's enjoying me. Cool. She's moving to Greece. That's fun. What game are you playing? Wow, really? Ten minutes away. That's why we have so much in common. Oh, I didn't press triangle. What a waste. Guy's got a lot of combos. No, stop attacking that guy. I didn't see anyone. Star doll. Cool. Star doll. And uh, Fiotica is like the old town of Athens. It's up north. Acropolis, Parthenon. Very picturesque. Cool. Look forward to seeing some photos. Stabby wabby. Don't be crabby. There bloody bear in here. Pretty impressive they have locks. Are they all here together? Run. Very pretty buildings, lots of flowers. I find, um... Oh. Not nice. What a lot of my girlfriends love about Greece is how white it is, you know? All those Greek islands where things are very white and stone. Surrounded by water. The Greek islands. I'm gonna go to war against these flies. I've dealt with a lot of them. And even more are gonna go down. Just they wait and see. They picked the wrong house to fly into on instinct. Guys are practicing their Mongol yells. You guys are getting really good at it. Oh, that guy's still looking around. What's it? What are you cheering about? Oh, he must have wind strike too. One, two. Lily! Lily Lee! How's that line dancing going? I'm actually just about to stop. You got me right at the end. Lily! I'm gonna finish off right here, but I'll, uh, I got something here for you, Lily. Just you wait. Lily Lee. Lily Lee, Lily Lee. Oh, thank you. Lily Lee, 
lily leaf I love when lily lee looks at me Oh can it be lily lee Will there be two lily lees or maybe three If it has a little daughter with young lily lee they could have a little lily a lily one two three Time for me to go goodbye But don't you cry There's a lot of life out there to live inside Goodbye everybody Goodbye